This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the wrong theme song. That's the wrong theme song. That's not the right theme song. This is the right theme song. There we go. Fighting. Wow. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett. How did I, I, you know, I'm just getting too old for this. But that that's our old theme, and this is our new theme, because it's jaunty, and I like jaunty. And we'll be jaunty until midnight tonight, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, here on the, uh, the uh, uh, let's see, the right coast of the United States of America, coming to you from New York City. And in about uh, 25 minutes from right now, we'll sit down and we'll talk with our citizens panel. But in the meantime, we have a once every three week guest to talk about politics. Ladies and gentlemen, once every couple of weeks, it is our privilege to talk to the political pundit. Eh, I don't want to call him a pundit. No. That, that's a dirty word. Uh, the, uh, the political pariah. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. What do we? What, what? What do you want to be called? Uh, you know, I was actually thinking of that. Uh, I, I talk about that in my show. I, I, I aspire to be a satirist, but you say that, and people think you have goat legs or something. Yeah. So I'm going to go with political comic. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst. Thanks. Yeah. Good to see you, yeah. Alex Bennett. Good to see you, too, because we're looking at each other on Skype. And, you know, I, I notice as, as the years go on, and I've noticed this in the photographs of you and so on, you've become to look, you've kind of gotten that uh, that aged, um, uh, what, um, uh, what could we call it, philosopher look to you. Wizened? Wizened? Wizened. Is that the term? Yeah. I'm going for wizened. <laughs> you going yeah. for wizened? Yeah, I, first I wanted to be dashing, and then uh, I figured I'd go for wizened. Yeah, well, but dashing totally. As you get older, age defines you. You know, it tells you you're wizened. It doesn't say you're going to be uh, a, a, a wonderfully handsome old man or something like that. You know, man about town, a roué, whatever. A uh, roué. I always wanted to be a roué. Yeah, yeah. My mother once said that to me. She, you know, when I was seeing a lot of women, she said, you're such a roué. That's went, cool. What the, fuck roué. Does, what the fuck does that mean? Because even... And means French kissing, and you know what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, a boulevardier. That's another term. A boulevardier. A boulevardier. Yeah. Is that like a roué? Yeah. A boulevardier. Yeah. But I learned that that was French. That was good. Only he, only he travels in yeah. better circles. But anyway, so you've gotten that wizened look. You've gotten that that uh, you, people should take you seriously when they look at you. You know. Oh, I don't care you, anymore. I'm so you've old. Got the flowing gray I, locks and the 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 beard that seems to shout authority. You know. I think clothes are chauvinist chauvinism of the old. You know, because young people would want to be naked, but old people, no, no, we're not going to be naked. Oh, oh no, we're not going to show no. anything. No, no. I look great. I lost, you know, I lost uh, 55 pounds, okay? So I look great. Either that or I'm dying, one or the other. But I, I lost 55 pounds. And that's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. And that's half of a young girl. Could be. Yeah. Young woman, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I, I lost weight, and uh, uh, you would think that that would have some positive values as you're getting older to make you look a little younger or whatever. No, it makes you look older because everything now is starting to sag. All the all the flesh that I pushed out with that fat for years uh, is suddenly I, turning into wobbly arms and wrinkles and, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that I've taken to wearing T-shirts on stage, yeah. and now when I see pictures of me, my belly's pushing the T-shirt out, yep. so I'm going to have to get bigger T-shirts. Well, yeah. I look great uh, with clothes on because yeah. I'm thin now. I put the I tuck the shirt in now. The shirt is always tucked in, right? And uh, even when I'm wearing underpants, I, I tuck it in the underpants. But anyway, 
Uh, but but the fact is, I you don't want to see me without those clothes on because they're they're a lot of wobbly parts. I think it's the British okay. call them. <laughs> Wobbly bits is what they call yeah, them. Yeah, the crispy bits, as they say. Yeah, the as the bits. say. So anyway, you were telling me before we started this conversation that you said something or you had a joke and you published it, what, on, on uh, as, a, as a post of some sort on Facebook or? Yeah, I, I, my, my stuff gets uh, syndicated through something called Kegel Cartoons. And it's a syndication service, and it goes out. Uh, it's available to a lot of newspapers, oh, okay. and about 30 a week pick it up. Oh, good, good. Okay, so, and you say that you came up with a term which I thought was very funny. I thought it was a very funny observation. I, I hadn't thought about it. Nobody else has thought about it. You're the first person I know to come up with this line, tell them what it is. It's PTSD, President Trump stress disorder. Yes, exactly. And I claim that it's 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 sweeping the nation, and uh, so it, a lot of jokes. And I did um, here. I'll read a couple of them to you. Uh, the top ten uh, PTSD. These are the symptoms: inability to sleep or sleep disturbed by recurring nightmares. Most involve a second or third term. <sighs> flashbacks to a simpler time when Trump was a goofy reality TV star. You find yourself saying to no one in particular, imagine if Obama had done that. Uh, <laughs> steadfast refusal to watch the news, too much like enabling him. For no apparent reason, you start screaming at your cat or Alex Trebek. Uh, constantly replay your movements on November 8th, wondering what you could have done to change the course of events. And that, like that. Yeah, inability. Yeah, and then uh, a bunch of jokes and, and so, uh, so all that, all pertaining to PTSD, the real PTSD, which is post traumatic stress disorder. And I get a bunch of emails from people who are upset, thinking that I, by calling it President Trump stress disorder, they thought I was making fun or making light of post traumatic stress disorder. You know, I've been talking to a lot of comedians lately on this show. I mean, we talked to Rube, and we talked to you, and we talked to Bubbles, and I talked to Pearl, okay? And every one of them say that it's getting harder to be a comedian because everybody gets so upset by anything anybody says when they're trying to be funny. Yeah, you heard about Judy Gold. She did a joke about uh, gluten-free something, and then she got a, a call from someone who had celiac disease. <laughs> yeah. And Judy Gold actually recanted. No, she, no, yeah. no, yeah. no. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not a Judy Gold fan anymore. Then. No, you, you can't. You, you do, gotta. You've got to. You if, if, you know something? There is there's a job called comedian. There's a job called uh, soothsayer. You know, I mean, you should not be subject to these people with all this politically correct bullshit. Uh, and that's and that's something else. That uh, I'm I'm stopping I'm stopping any attempts at being bipartisan, any and or all attempts I'm going straight at at Trump and I mentioned it in my act I, I I'm going to go after Trump the same way he went after America with lies and threats and bombast and insults and and alternative facts and lies and insults and and choosy truths and lies. So I'm, I'm going after well, him the same I, way he went after us. Well, you, you, you do know the latest on Trump is that he raped a uh, 13-year-old girl. Oh, God. Now, you see, you believe it, don't you? So let's, I, so let's start the rumor. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there because was, if you're going to talk about if you're going to talk about so-called truthiness, okay, um, yeah. and if, if he's going to talk about the fake news and stuff, well, let's give him some fake news. Yeah. To well, our advantage, he raped the thirteen-year-old. Just start that. Everybody, go online. Say, did you hear that Trump raped the thirteen-year-old girl? By the, if everybody listening to us right now, and that's not very many, were to put that up on their Facebook page, <laughs> on their Facebook page, within a day, it will be fact. I just heard someone told me. Many people are talking about this. That Trump. Uh, when he was in New York in the 80s, as a developer, he raped a 13-year-old girl. You'd heard that, huh? Because I heard the same thing. I heard that, yeah. Yeah. Now, everybody listening to me right now on your Facebook page say, did you hear 
the latest that Trump raped a 13-year-old girl. Back in the, what, when did we put it, 70s, 80s? Okay, 80s. Back, back in the 80s. 80s. Yeah. 80s, and now yeah. she would be 46. Yeah, yeah. Say it was 84. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but just, 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 all you have to do is put that on your Facebook page. It's all you have to do. Did you hear that? And by tomorrow, this will be news. And people will believe it. And people will believe it. Exactly. So, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, if he, if he, if he was going to do the whole thing with lying, well, then we should do the same thing. We should fight fire with fire. I agree. We're playing by his rules. He yeah. played the rules. I mean, he's, he's using chaos as fog, that whole thing about trying to distract people by saying he just learned that Obama had bugged him and they called him bad and sick. You know, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. And no one called him on it. All right, where did you hear it? Where, who told you this? Uh, and and uh, is there any proof? No, there's no proof. Never was proof. All the all the, the intelligence communities, no, no, that never happened. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to him. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter to him. But you know something? And then if you call him on lying, people say, well, Hillary lied too. Hillary lied twice. You know, maybe maybe nine times. This guy, every fucking word that comes out of his mouth is a lie, and he thinks it's oh, it's creative exaggeration because that's that's how he got all the deals. He would make shit up and promise people pie in the sky, and and unicorns would shit rainbows on their way to to the event or the development, and and people people let him get away with this shit because he would sue them. Well, you know what I love about about people when they vote? You know, they vote for a guy like Trump. And then when he becomes president and he doesn't do what he said he was going to do, the people who voted for him always say, well, you know, that's when he was running. Well, then, then you don't vote to him based on what he said. You know, when you argued in his behalf, you said, well, you know what he's going to do. And now you're going, well, you know, they never keep their promises. They never do what they say they're going to do. They never. I mean, this guy, this guy changes his opinion in one statement. You know, he'll You're go. He'll, same interview, yeah. Yeah, he'll go from hating NATO to loving NATO all in the same sentence. NATO's okay now. Did you hear that? NATO's all right now. Why? Because you talked with them? <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, he realized that the job is a little more complicated than he thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want that job. Do you? No, no. And why don't we want it? Too much work. <laughs> it's too much work. And this yeah, is a guy. A, this is a guy who traditionally has not had to work. No, he just he yells. This is the first job he's ever held. If you think about it. You know, so he doesn't. Know, but he doesn't know how to have have a boss. Yeah, he's never gotten a paycheck before. He, yeah, and he's not taking one now. I think. I think he said he's he's only taking a dollar a year or something. No, I think he took the money and then donated it to Wharton Business School or something. Oh, oh really? Wharton Business School should be put out of business for having created him. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, so here's the thing: Who are the most disgusting human beings on the face of the planet? I'll answer that for you without even having you have to guess. The French. Okay. What? Huh? The French. Huh? The French are terrible. You know. They're, All right. They're, that's they're, the basis they're, of your premise. Don't prove it. They're, they're known to be anti-Semitic. They're known they're a lot. If you've ever been to France, you learn to hate the French. You love France, but you learn to hate the French. Even the French hate the French. Even the French hate the French. Somebody said that to me once. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but I got to tell you, they're smarter than we are because they didn't elect Le Pen, you know, and I thought that was going to happen with the, with the Trump thing happening. I figured that was well within the prospects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they didn't. They overwhelmingly, two overwhelmingly. Two to one. Yeah. Uh, didn't want Le Pen. So, I mean, they're smarter than we are. They don't get welled up with the dummies like we did. I mean, we, who voted for Trump? That's a joke. That's a that's a bad movie somebody wrote. Yeah, we're in the pre-credit sequence. Oh, by the of, way, uh, it's a bad movie that somebody wrote that nobody would make. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
So I don't yeah. know. I don't know who voted for him. being stupid. Used to be people were embarrassed to be stupid. Now, now they they carry it around like it's a badge of authenticity. You know. Yeah. I'm really I'm really dumb, so I'm real. Oh, I watched these people on uh, what was was it? Where was it that I was watching this? Well, I think it was on 60 Minutes this week when they were dealing with people who uh, are seeing, uh, at least in their neighborhood, a person being deported. A guy who runs a restaurant and he was being deported because uh, uh, he was a uh, he was an illegal alien, illegal immigrant, and because he had two traffic tickets, he was considered uh, uh, undesirable. And they threw him out of the country. He was running a restaurant. He'd been here as an illegal immigrant for something like fifteen years. And did you see the story? No. And 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 so now all these people uh, are sitting around with sixty minutes complaining. How could they do this to this really nice guy? And then when asked how many of them voted for Trump, about half of them raised their hands. So you know, I'm sorry. You know, you were dumb enough to vote for him, and I and and to their credit, I think it was on sixty minutes. The the interviewer said, "But you voted for Trump, you know, and now he's doing this. Did you expect that you're this person you really like, who run owns a restaurant, and everybody loves the guy, and everybody loves the family, and he's got a wife and two kids, and so on? Did you did you ever think this was going to happen? Well, we didn't think that he was going to do that." He was going to take Bob away from us or Roberto or whatever the guy's name was, you know? So, I mean, that's the kind of stupidity we live with. People, They had exactly the same thing. They had, a, I think it was on uh, ABC News, and the guy went to West Virginia. Yeah, because it was David Wright who used to be in uh, San Francisco at KQED. And David Wright goes to, I don't know, a cold, cold country. Right. And uh, he meets this couple and the guy ran a coal truck. I mean, he he drove coal mm -hmm. and now he's got black lung disease and his uh, his medications are six thousand dollars a month. Oh, but he doesn't have to pay anything because of Obamacare. And he's thank God for Obamacare. But you voted for Trump. Yes. And I'd vote for him again. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, I mean, you know, the thing you is, know, most of the people who are going to be denied health care and end up having worse lives and possibly including death are Trump supporters. So I, I think the Democrats would be uh, wise to uh, let it pass and play the long game. Well, I mean, if, if it does pass, they are going to be, get the long game played because uh, people are going to suddenly go, hey, well, now his decisions have directly affected me. Now, look. Obamacare it was no great shakes. I always called it insurance reform, not you know medical health initiative. And um, I, you know, but he, Obama put through what he thought he could get put through. He wasn't going to put through single payer health care, which I'm sure he would have been happy to do. But he knew he would never get it. He had to get something that at least started the ball rolling in the right direction. And Obamacare wasn't the best of all possible ideas. No, but it was better than nothing at all. And and that's the point. And now what's happened is they're giving us nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, it's not health insurance. It's wealth insurance. There's like an $880 billion tax cut. You know, the, the taxes that, that Obama put on uh, the rich – to pay for the expansion of health care coverage. Uh, that was for the rich. You know, it's like 3.8% yeah. on really, really, really rich people and 0.6% on really rich people. And, you know, so uh, like uh, Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett said that if this goes through, you know, his, his tax rate will go down and he pays forty million a year in taxes, and his his tax rate will go down. He'll save like six million dollars. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, you know the thing is that uh, um, uh, under this new health care plan, um, they are not allowed to not insure people because of pre-existing conditions, but they are allowed to 
charge more for people with what they consider pre-existing conditions. And you know what one of those pre-existing conditions is? Pregnancy. If you've ever been pregnant? No. Oh, so, okay. so I don't have that pre-existing condition. I think elect, uh, erectile dysfunction is a pre-existing condition. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of things there that you go, wow. You know, they can, in other words, most diseases that you've had once are a pre-existing condition. And then they, they can't deny you insurance, but they can charge you more for it. Well, not only that, but they can set up a high-risk insurance pool, the states, yeah. if their states are allowed to. And before Obamacare, California had a high-risk pool, and there was a waiting list to get on it because it was limited in scope. And before Obamacare, the waiting list to get on the high-risk insurance pool in California was 7,000 people. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Well, you know, I mean, this is going to cost people uh, 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 their insurance. Uh, and when a, you say it's going to cost them an arm and a leg, no, really. <laughs> one estimate that I saw, and I don't know if this is reliable, said that this could result in the death of about 44,000 people or something like that. Yeah. You know, as a result of, of, uh, of, of not being able to get insurance. Um, and, and granted, I mean, you know, the, the Obamacare didn't really solve the problem. It didn't make it that much cheaper, although you did get incentives and so on. And if you were of a certain uh, uh, income bracket, you could, you know, get money back for the insurance you were getting. Uh, but uh, still, I mean, as bad as Obamacare was, it was better than anything they're coming up with. In fact, they're not coming up with anything. Well, the House certainly didn't. I think the Senate will. The Senate understands, um, you know, they're they're a little more responsive. Yeah. So the, uh, we get to wait till the middle of June before the Senate comes up with anything. You know, how are you? Then, how are you insured? Um, Debbie's on California covered, covered California, which what? is Obamacare. Oh, and, okay. And I'm on Medicare. Uh, you are on Medicare. You're old enough for it now. 65. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize you were that old. Oh, I know. Good, good. You're getting very close to me. Maybe you'll catch up. I don't think uh, you'll get a pass you. <laughs> the only way you pass me is if I drop dead tomorrow and you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, uh, but but uh, 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 so you get Medicare. Okay, that's fine. Now, now here, I, I, I tell people this and, and I this want them to funny. know it. I, when I first became eligible for Medicare, my doctor went, well, thank God. Okay, now, here's what we can do. And he gave me all these shots that I should get, you know, like shingles and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. All, all these shots because Medicare will pay for it, whereas previously my insurance wouldn't pay for it. So now there's all this stuff that, yeah. that he said, we can do this now, and you're covered, and, and this is good. So... Wow. Well, uh, and and how do you find Medicare? It's terrific, right? Uh, well, I've only been in it two months, but oh, yeah. okay. But it's terrific. I've been in it for quite a few years, and and I I find I've never had a real problem with it. You know, uh, yeah. uh, the only thing is that there's twenty percent that you don't pay, that they don't pay, and that you have to come up with. So then you have to have a supplemental insurance. Do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have supplement. Yeah. And and what do you use, ARP or one Anthem, of those? Anthem Blue Blue Cross. Oh, okay. All right. And how much you pay for that a month? Can I ask you what? what? I don't know. Debbie knows. Because here here's the problem I have. I think that Medicare should be a hundred percent. Why it only takes care of eighty percent? I mean, as long as you get to eighty percent, you may as well go all the way. You know, uh, as long as you blew the guy, you may as well fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and uh, yet they stop at eighty percent, and that's that's what I don't like about Medicare, uh, is that people have to have supplemental, and sometimes people who are old enough to have Medicare are on a fixed income. You know, the money doesn't just come rolling in. Yeah, and and so why did why did they make it at eighty percent? I just it never made sense to me. I like that term, fixed income. Yes. Yeah, I'm on a fixed income. 
myself. Just, you know, social- just the fact that income is coming in. You know, and that's Social Security. Yeah, I'm Social Security, and I have a slight pension from AFTRA, you know. Oh, cool. How many years were you in? Well, I I didn't do that many years, believe it or not, and I get about 1,000 a month. But I've always been in AFTRA, but I never worked under AFTRA very much, except when when I was originally in New York. And uh, that, that gave me at least a thousand dollars a month. So I'm thinking, if I did my whole life working under after, think how much money I'd be getting every month. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was a pretty good pension plan. But uh, anyway, you know, at, uh, here, here, these are the things we talk about as we get older. Do you know we've already used up all our time, all our allotted time here? Oh, talking about being old. Uh, next time we'll talk about being young. Really? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it was a lot more carefree. It was a lot more carefree and a lot less painful and a lot less aches and pains. Hey, listen, I think the world of you. Alex you know. Bennett, I'm so sorry I spaced early this morning. I yeah. had uh, to make a, a run, but uh, thank you for rescheduling me. Yeah. Uh, and- being so kind and generous with your time, oh. and let's do it again well, in a couple of weeks. You're kind of generous with your time. Okay, stay right where you are, and we'll figure that one out. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen... That's Will Durst. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Well, everybody, hi, how are you? Uh, We're back again. uh, And uh, Will Durst is with us about once every three weeks, and I love having him on. Intelligent, smart, knows what's going on, and uh, an old friend. And that's always the best part about it. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do now is we are going to go to the uh, citizens panel. Uh, and I'm going to do that by turning on the, oh, nobody even tried to call, even though it turns out the line was on. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch, the line was on. Okay, well, our lines are open now if you want to give us a call. By the way, this is, uh, this is not a new camera, but this is a new shot from the camera. I finally learned how to make it go wide. See, it's even wider than my hands. And the only problem is, is that if I go back enough, uh, you can see these pants I wear. Now, uh, I, I love these things because as long as I'm not going out and as long as I'm sitting around the house, they're comfortable. So I do my show in them, but I'm afraid that you're, you're going to see them. I'd like to have the illusion of everything above the waist, you know. But be, now that the camera is so wide, uh, I, uh, I don't know you know what's going on anyway i need calls from people uh it is time for you to call and if you um if you want to call the best way to find out how to call is to go to gabnet.net and at gabnet.net you'll find out all the information you need in order to uh in order to do that uh and it'll tell you how to get skype and it'll tell you our skype number and a whole bunch of things like that Hey, Scott Boddicker, how are you? I see you're there, but I don't see your oh, picture yet. So turn camera, it, camera. Yeah, turn it on, on. So, so the folks can see you. There you are. I had to go back and reshut off the uh, the live feed, I guess. Really? Yeah, I had it on. You didn't hear it? I heard I it a little low. bit. Yeah, I heard it a little bit. Okay, yep. I'm sorry. Yep, 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 yep. So how are you, my friend? Well, I'm sorry I missed you on Friday. I was uh, going to call in... Uh, Drunk again, but I passed out before the show started. <laughs> it would it would say it's a it was Cinco de Mayo. I don't know if that's a big thing in New York. It's a reason. It's like a Mexican Independence Day or something like that. It's a good reason to drink and yeah yeah and uh, or, or victory over France or something whatever it was. Victory and over France. My wife's out there correcting me now, but but anyway. So but uh, yeah. Kind of missed the show. Yeah, well, we missed you, but you know, we 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 get along anyway. But oh yeah, yeah, you had a good show. I listened to it. Yeah, you know, you're all you, you know when you're there, you're there at the very beginning, and you give me something to talk about while all these other laggers. Yeah, are, yeah, are that's, that's why I come in. in. Then I can just kind of drift to the back. Yeah, how did you do with that uh, <laughs> with that with that uh, puzzle you were doing? Oh, it's uh, it's coming along. Uh, we're up to uh, we got the sky done, and we got some of the mountains done on the left side, and and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I uh, turn on your camera again because yeah, uh, I'm Phil, trying. There Phil it goes. Kicked yours I had off. To accept Phil's camera or whatever it is. That little green thing it shot. 
happens at the bottom. Oh, now, you don't have to accept my camera. Well, it's something comes on, it, it, so you can see me. I guess see, I don't know what now, it is. Now I it's, can't. Now I can't see Scott. See, Scott is just whirling oh, around. He was number one. I came on in second position, yeah. and so therefore, it, it, number one gets bounced out. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I toggled it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, uh, so, Jeff. Turn down your uh, turn down your feed. There we go. And um, we also need a camera from you, Jeff. Can you oh, see yeah. No. Let's see. No, we're not. We can't see you yet, Scott. And I might have to. I see Scott. You see Scott? Okay. Yeah. Well, then he. Sh I should see him soon. You okay. Know. Okay. Uh, but uh, well, the fact that I can't see him though means that my you, you can see Scott. All you guys can see Scott. I can see everybody yeah. except me. I can't yeah. see I Scott. I see you. And, and the, audience, there. the audience yeah. can't see Scott either. He's whirling around here. Ah, I love this. Uh, Scott's Skype. really here. Skype, <laughs> Skype is now so good. He went I shut it off. I'm trying to cycle it up. It might show up now that we got an even number. Yeah. Oh, you're frozen, Scott. That's that's what's going on. I see Scott, but he's he's not. Ah. He talks and he does, and there's no movement. Uh, Scott, why don't you hang up and just call right back? All right, okay. no problem. Okay, that'll 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 solve the problem. That's why I don't like being first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why we don't like anybody being first too. You know, <laughs> but uh, it it, uh, it causes problems. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Just fine. Good. We're all better off than Director Comey. Yeah, let me see here. Here comes Scott. Now let's see what happens. Uh, okay, Scott, turn on your camera. Good. Oh, let's see. Going back off. It's on. It's oh, there. Yeah. It goes. And come on, come on. There he is. Okay. See, that's all. That's the the it, 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 inconsistencies Skype, of Scott. I do a double tap on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, um, uh, it. Let me turn on some uh, fa a fan in here. I'm, I need a little, little fan. Uh, and uh, uh, let me see here. Okay, so we're ready to go. Um, so you, you see, you can see. Well, you you can't see it because you can't see the the camera I'm using. No. But I oh I, it's the new one. No, I did. I took that one back. I didn't really? like it. I didn't, I didn't like you, it. Uh, <coughs> I feel you actually bought it. I the white. Yeah, uh, and I took it back. Oh. It was a 4K. And it's uh, from it's called Brio, and it's from Logitech. Uh -huh. But I compared it to my other cameras. It, it doesn't look that much better at all, you know. So <laughs> what I did figure out how to do is how to take my camera and make it go wide. I used to have to fill up the screen, so it was it was kind of uh, uh, fuzzing out my picture a little bit. Now I've got a full screen, and it probably looks great to everybody out uh, there. I would you imagine. have the same camera as I do with a 920 or something, or a 930 uh, Logitech? Uh, I f forget what the name of it is. I think yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a something 30, yeah. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, and that, you can make it go wider on the camera, not just with the software? Well, no, no. What, hap what happened is, is that I, have a, I use a program here, uh, uh, which does all the switching and everything else. Okay, and, yeah. and when I put this into it, I couldn't get it to go anything but a square picture instead of a wide picture. And then I found the switch I could toggle to make it go wide. Oh. So now I'm filling the whole screen with the picture, and it's not being diminished in, in is isn't getting fuzzy as a result so it's a software issue it had nothing to do with the camera it, itself it had it was a, a bennett issue yeah you know? okay so <laughs> now everybody can see me like i think that probably i look really good really good although i never look really good no, you yeah, probably not as pixelated as you usually are what yeah. right. no, it looks good it yeah. looks fun. now rob is on a phone tonight it looks like that is correct and oh. where where are you rob i'm home just not in the mood to be on video. I've been uh, struck down with uh, with a problem, and I'm just not in the mood to be on camera. Oh, what do you mean? What kind of problem? Anything we? Can... A health problem. I might have to have some minor surgery. Oh no. Oh. I'll find out Friday. What is the health problem? Can you tell us? Have you? Well, have you ever had a sebaceous cyst? Uh yeah. Have you ever had one that's gone in, uh, infected? No. Well, I have one infected, and you know where it is? It's on your face. I bet it's on your ass. No. On your face? No. Nope. On your nose? No, well, that would be the face. Very your, sensitive location. A, a pe your penis. The penis? Balls, man. Balls. You have a sebaceous cyst That's on your balls? Well, it's great. It looks like you have three of them. 
it that's what it looks like and it's <laughs> ah! very uncomfortable well, that's why you didn't a, want to a look sebaceous at cyst is no, a, I'm just it, laying down and I just, wait a minute uh, I did have a sebaceous cyst go rogue on me once and it was on the side of my ear and it was from wearing earphones all the time in radio in the old days, you remember how the, the they, we now have soft earphones. In those days, they were like hard ceramic earphones. And I got literally a cyst right, uh, uh, let, me, let me show people, like right here. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it then got infected, uh, you know, and so I had to have it lanced. And that's really what, is that what they're going to do with yours is lance They're going to lance my balls, yeah. yeah. Oh! <laughs> Oh, damn it. One of his testicles Wait, fell out. Are and, we going to get sued? Not only are they going to lance him, yeah. but then they're going to squeeze him. Oh! Oh, you, what, you what, get the pus to come out? What, what, yeah. What, what, that's going nice. to be so much fun. Is a nurse going to do this? Because that would be the good part about it. He's going to vomit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I need alcohol on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Might as well get your colonoscopy, too. That. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. Uh, but that's... I mean, uh, you know, they're very, very, one side of them is so hard. Like, <clears throat> yeah. It, it's like touching an orange. Oh. It's solid. Oh. And uh, it's it, it feels like it's going to explode. Wow, and that's it's just hard developed? to sit. It's hard to move. What's that? It just developed, or uh, it just developed. Surfaced? I woke up with it on Sunday. Went mm. to the doctor Monday, and she said about four days it'll be ready. What do you mean in four days it'll be ready? Well, it's got to it's, it's got to be ripe. Oh wow! And then you, is it is it an office visit? I don't know that yet. The well, last time I had a, a cyst lance that uh, was in the office, the time before it was really bad, and I had to have surgery in, in an operating room. Well, where, where, I don't think this one's that bad. But well, wait a minute. Where have you had these sebaceous cysts? And who is eating I, cookies and not sharing them with the rest of us? <laughs> I was opening some pills. Oh, is that pills? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then keep them to yourself. And, and not the organ. <laughs> not the, but the kinds kind. that are fun. <laughs> yeah. Tasteful. Yeah. So, so uh, you you just don't know what this is going to entail. No, I won't know until like you know how it is. You can't go to a doctor, like it takes forever. So I went to a walk-in clinic on Monday. She said, "You better find a surgeon." So that's what I did, uh, and I, I to go see the surgeon on Friday. Yeah, that's the the, the good thing about the walk. I like the walk-ins uh, because a lot of times I get something you know like oh I don't know maybe I get. Uh, uh, an infection of some sort or a, you know I think I had sin a sinus problem once and you can go into these you, if you call your doctor it's like a three day wait till you can see your doctor but you can walk right. into these places and see somebody and they'll solve most small problems but if it's a bigger <coughs> problem than you're used to you know than they're used to or, or that they can do uh, they send you to your doctor they refer you to a doctor or whatever but they're really great yes Scott what kind of surgeon did you go to? Just a general surgeon. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. I'm just curious in case I ever get one. One who has a steady hand. Yeah. <laughs> and big boobs. <laughs> I wonder if the surgeon general can operate. I, because <laughs> cause they call him the surgeon general, but a lot of them never did surgery. Um. I think some of them have. They, some of them have, but they, yeah. you're not required to have been a surgeon in order to be the Surgeon General. Does anybody right. know the Surgeon General anymore? C. Everett Coop was for years. Yeah, I remember him. Since them, then, I can't tell you one. Yeah. Um, uh, well, no, there, 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 was that, there was that black woman who was very good, and she was talking about, you know, birth control pills and things like that and wasn't very popular with certain elements in the society. Uh, but uh, there for a while, the uh, Republicans wouldn't let uh, uh, Obama get one. They wouldn't approve it for the longest time. Uh, I that, believe that was rude. It's crazy. Who it cares? Sounds, about the sounds like uh, this: uh, the uh, approval of the Supreme Court justice. Yeah, but this different. is just, this is the Surgeon fucking General. Come on. He does nothing. Well, there's something about, you know, his health care issue, whatever. Gun, it was guns. It was over guns. That's what it was because the, the, the guy that he uh, nominated 
was, uh, you know, thought guns were dangerous. Imagine that. Pardon me for having an opinion, you know. <laughs> Pardon me for having an opinion. You know, what, what I saw was uh, 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 Jimmy Kimmel uh, had his thing with his kid uh, being born a blue baby and having to have a heart operation immediately right out of the, mm -hmm. out of the vagina. And um, he... Um, he told the whole story on a Monday night that he came in to tell it. And part of it was, you know, I, it's just that every kid should be able, uh, every child should be able to have full health care the day they're born because these kind of things do happen, you know. And so then he took the rest of the week off and people uh, uh, substituted for him while he cared for his newborn kid. And then he was back on Monday night and he comes back and he says, there were all kinds of complaints. Like Newt Gingrich was on Fox complaining about Kimmel, you know, and saying, well, any, anybody can, you know, if you have a sick kid like that, you can walk in any hospital in the United States and they will operate on that kid. And Kimmel made the point, yes, they will. That's true. He said, what he didn't tell you is after that, they won't do a goddamn thing. In other words, if there are follow-up operations and there's care that needs to be taken and aftercare on an operation like this, you don't get that when you walk into the emergency room. You only get the basic care. And um, so people were like writing, <clears throat> writing and saying he was a creep. I think the New York Post called him a, you know, a, a, a commie or whatever. I don't know, you know, but... Uh, and he said, you know, he said, I really want to apologize to the American public for, for feeling that, you know, newborn kids should be, be able to get health care. Yeah. I, 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 it, I, it was a mistake on my part, and I'm sorry I ever said it, and I apologize to anybody who was offended by it. You know, yeah. kids don't pay anything when they go to, I believe, it's Shriners Hospital. And they'll take any kid that needs uh, a, a surgery, an operation, and they'll follow it all the way through. That's the Sam, uh, not Sammy David, that's the uh, Th uh, Danny Thomas uh, yeah. charity. That's, no, uh, it's no. St. Jude's. St. Jude's. Saint, okay, which one is the one is uh, Shriners? Well, there's uh, a Shriners uh, Hospital in San Francisco thing, that's, that's maintained by the Shriners. But, you know, even these hospitals that do this have limits. It's not like every sick kid can wind up at the Shriners Hospital. Otherwise, they'd be up to here no, with kids. I don't think they turn away anybody. I think, I think that they, uh, I, I think there's a point at which they would have to. Let me put it that way. They haven't yet. Uh, well, you know. we don't know that. We don't know that. You just yeah. hear that. Well, uh, I, my ex is... Uh, uh, family was involved with Shriners and the uh, the other sect of uh, of the Shriners. I forget well, the Masons. <laughs> uh, uh, no, there's a, there's another another group. Uh, you know, there's the Masa Masonics. Uh, then there's the Shriners. And, and imagine, and, imagine and, poor Rob. If he didn't have health insurance, he'd have to walk into an emergency mm -hmm. room and say, "I have a cyst on my balls." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They would feel pity for and, then, and then they would speak into the microphone and say, we have a guy with a cyst on his balls here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get the baseball bat. Pop it. Yeah. <laughs> aren't, aren't the Shriners the guys who drive around in those little cars? Yeah, those little itty-bitty cars, yeah. And then uh, what do they wear on their head? Wear, wear a turban. They're yeah, red, a fez. Red a fez. 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 Mm -hmm. fez. Nice big fez. Scottish Rite, that's the other one. So the Scottish Rite, the yeah. Shriners, and uh, yeah, but they're and, all, and they're the, all, they're, they're, all part, they're all part of the Masons. Sort of. No, it's not sort of. I, they are. I don't know if they're part of the Masons, but many Shriners are Masons, and many Masons are Shriners. Yeah. And, and many, many Shriners are members well, of the Well, if many Scott. Shriners are Masons, then many Masons would be Shriners. You didn't have to say that part of it. It sounds like syllogistic reasoning to me. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you know what syllogistic means. Uh, yeah. uh, I have an idea. <laughs> Hello, to, uh, Tony Magno is with us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Who oh. won't stop writing me about a dog he doesn't have. <laughs> it's true. Oh yeah, he's he's bugging, <laughs> and now he's he's attacking, saying I'm closed-minded because I don't want uh, uh, single-payer health care. Yeah. Well, I can't even discuss that anymore. Yeah. Um, not, he doesn't believe anything about Trump. Anything. He fires a guy investigating. Well, look. Well, we'll, let, we'll get into that. It was, we'll, we'll get into that. We have, we have, based on, we have plenty uh, based of, on, we have plenty of time yes, to talk I mean, about the the that. move that will probably give Trump more misery than he ever believed he would get. Well, we'll, we'll get to, to that in a minute. To the Middle East, uh, you know, Jeff. Can I, oh, I'm yeah, before we get into that, 
heavy duty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about it's not exactly a light discussion, but I went to a funeral today. Oh. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. They have food? Yeah. Was good, it's a good place to pick up women. Well, I had plenty of women, but uh, <laughs> married to one of them. And she was there too. I was going to say something. Anyway, so the funeral. Yeah. Was... But here's the interesting part it was a military system that ran, ran it. Oh, you mean it was a military uh, funeral? Funeral, yeah. yeah. And it was very interesting because the guy's my, bro my brother in law. Yeah, and, uh, fortunately, died 60, 63 years old. Oh, yeah. A punk, you know, a young punk. Young, but, young punk, no yeah. Feeling. Right. But anyway, uh, he grew up, uh, you know, going to college and, and got involved in uh, uh, the uh, being an airplane pilot and, and he went, to, went with the government and and learned how to fly with them and flew with them and all that kind of stuff and then he worked for uh different airplanes companies uh united and then i think one of the other ones and i can't remember maybe three of them yeah. so anyway you know it's a funeral small family group a whole bunch of people show up there's over 250 people who the hell are all these people I mean, obviously, this family, obviously, there's a bunch of people who grew up, you know, and haven't seen their friends and whatever from high school or whatever. All of these guys are people from the Air Force. And they've got all the regular clothes on. And... If they're an American Airlines guy, they got his stuff on. <laughs> if the gal works for United, she's got her stuff on there. And I go, wow. And I, get, I realized that all of these people who are on the airplane, yeah, who are the pilots, the co-pilots, and all that kind of stuff, who we never quite think about, yeah, they have their own community. And this is an opportunity for them to all get together. Wow. Once a year or whatever. Same with cops. Yeah, it would be the same thing. I'd rather hang out with a bunch of stewardesses and pilots than a bunch of cops. There were no stewardess. Or at no? Least none who admit it. <laughs> oh, cabin attendants, excuse me. <laughs> cabin whatever. attendants. And I, know, and I asked him, and he wouldn't admit to it either. <laughs> so, guys, uh, but uh, it was an interesting group of people. And, uh, and I, I got to say, it's, this whole military thing, just overdone. Yeah. It's just overdone. Uh, let, me, let me say something for a moment here. Go ahead. Because uh, uh, Patrick has sent a note saying, uh, Rob's a better man than I. Much respect. Damn. Ball squeeze and Lance. You know. Uh, and now I want to mention uh, Patrick's in the hospital tonight. Oh. He's getting antibiotics, and tomorrow they're going to do the getting rid of the stones. Yeah. Uh, sure. So uh, Keith and Mick will be gone stuff. as of tomorrow night. So. Uh, no, but there uh, he uh, he's he, you know he knew he'd have to go back and do it, but he's go, he's on antibiotics tonight and lying in the hospital. So our respect goes out to you too. But yes, Absolutely. I agree with you. Having your balls yeah. lanced is uh, deserves yeah. respect. And uh, I'm I'm, a sh I'm very sure that you're going to have great surgery to do it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, good luck uh, with that. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's a um, um, uh, 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 it's going to be a, a thing for him tomorrow, but it's not a bad deal. And uh, you know, these are one of the things he has. It's part of keeping up with his uh, his health and all the things that he needs. And it's a it's a different way of uh, of, uh, of of you know approaching life in that you have to say to yourself every now and then, I'm going to have to do this. You know, he's prone to kidney stones. I, I don't know if his diet uh, uh, can well, create. Well, it isn't. It isn't natural. so much that he's prone to kidney stones. It isn't so much that he's prone to kidney stones, but that he uh, uh, he when he gets them, there's no way of getting rid of them. 
okay, because he has to use a catheter in order to urinate. Right. And uh, they, they, they won't pass that way, so they have to go in and get them. So this is, a, this is almost regular maintenance for him every now and then when they get to be mm -hmm. too much of a problem. Of course, if he, didn't, if he wasn't prone to you know, stones get, yeah. getting them, then he would, wouldn't have to do it. But uh, you, anyway. you wonder if, they, if there's a way, because I know I've had a dog and my brothers had dogs that get kidney stones, and they put them on special diets, and they don't get stones anymore. You know, so same you would with think that they would be able to isolate that, and then he could eat a diet that was... Uh, well, we, you know, he explained one thing the other day. Remember we said to him, why don't they just blast him away like they do? And he says, because they still have still to get... Pass he still can't yeah. pass them. He still can't pass them. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Rob is saying is is nip it at the bud with, uh, with a diet. My, my little terrier what? was prone to kidney stones. She had minerals in her urine. So we have to give her this special SO diet. Yep. doesn't have uh, minerals in it. Uh, it's it's an expensive diet, but uh, she's been totally healthy, and and uh, because a dog of that size, a kidney stone would kill her. Yeah, and so. that's and that's exactly what happened with the, my brother's dog, and and we had a uh, my parents, we had a dog that was uh, from the same family, and it was the same thing. They both got the same thing. They both went to the vet and were put on special diets. The rest of their lives, yeah. they never got into those stones. Yeah. We use this stuff called urinary so. Yeah. Well, anyway, they, I, you know, I don't know if they give those to people though. That's the it's only good though. Wouldn't, they, wouldn't that make sense? Well, it wouldn't yeah, make not, sense, not but, dog food, but I yeah. mean, at least break down what's in, you know, what's in the uh, diet. Yeah. Yeah. And tell you what you should stay away hey, from. Jeff, tell you what turn you on do. your camera, will you? you you're, oh, you're off right now. Uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but if it were that easy, don't you think we'd be doing it? more often i don't know they could do it with dogs what's the difference i mean if if in fact uh you know uh, patrick has a situation where he constantly makes stones if there was a pill he could take to prevent stones then i suppose he would i suppose they'd give it to him but apparently that's not the answer for him hey fido what do you think about that <laughs> <laughs> he likes <laughs> The uh, the drug might be uh, approved for animals, but not approved for humans. That could it's be. not a drug. It's food. Yeah, uh, a drug. Uh, Brian, right. Brian has something to say here about it. Yes, Brian. Well, a rather broad-based answer I'm about to uh, offer her or suggestion. Um, first of all, as of like 10 years ago or 2001 or 2000, a friend of mine, this was secondhand information, a friend of mine told me that a successful eye transplant had been made on a canine, but uh, that could not be done on a human on account of how complex we are. And as unfortunate as it is that we are a complicated organism, I wish we weren't, we are. Um, uh, I, I, Jeff, Jeff touched on upon it. it touched it up upon it in the sense that uh, it, it, it's a diet specifically made for a canine or an animal, but nothing as complex as uh, what we do well, or what, yeah, we, also, what we also, make, what also we eat. dogs take in a limited amount of food in, in its variety, you know. Yeah, true, true. It's like, when's the last time you ever saw a dog eating corn on the cob, you know. I mean, yeah, true. I right. like organic You're chicken what they're gonna get. Yeah, No, but, uh, you know, they're basically they're meat eaters. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, the, the problems they would have may be different than the problems we have. Uh, I mean, I, 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 you, I take ibuprofen, and that, uh, I, I worry that I'm going to get another stone because ibuprofen can cause kidney stones. Dogs that, don't take ibuprofen. Isn't know? that if it's mixed with alcohol? I, they never told me that. They just said you should stay away from ibuprofen. But I found that ibuprofen, for instance, with this leg thing that I've got, which, by the way, last night I sat on it wrong again without oh. thinking, put my foot, my knee down on the bed before I got in, and I, the pain was excruciating. And it's better now. So You have a torn meniscus. I mean, they can fix it with orthoscopic surgery. Well, I don't I'm want told it. I, I, coffee they, but, can cause stones, al too. Also, I'm told that uh, uh, it can be fixed by just uh, nurturing it, you know, that I, it's not that bad, uh, and I can nurture <clears> it for a while, and it will get better. At least that's what the physical therapist feels. And uh, If, if they know. do an MRI, you can get an idea of how... Nobody's, putting me, put in an M nobody's putting me in an MRI machine. 
<laughs> they tell you they don't have to put you in all the way. Well, if they, if they, if, 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 even if half my body's in there, I'll start panicking. But anyway, claustrophobic. I see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they want to do it, we'll have to do an open MRI. But uh, you know, the knee is, uh, it, it, you know, it gets better, and then I forget, you know, because it's feeling good, and I just get into bed knee first, and all of a sudden, man, shooting pain, and then my knee pops when I stand up. It goes pop, you know, and I feel it going back into place. But Jesus! So last night I did it, and then this morning I, you know, I could hardly walk, and now I'm feeling better. And by tomorrow I'll probably be able to walk two miles with, it, you know. So, but anyway, is that how blood clots could form too? No, uh, no, 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 no. That's uh, that's something else. That stuff uh, with the veins and that's stuff. That's how you get a die from that shit. Man. Yeah. What were you going to yeah. say, Jeff? Jeff? <clears throat> yeah, it. I was going to talk. Uh, medically about the fact about the difference between animals and, and American and, and regular humans. <laughs> and Americans. This, the, 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 answer <laughs> is, the answer is not very different in a lot of things. There are certain things that are the same, but there's a lot of things that are different. And one of the examples that I'll give you is that I, I happen to uh, have a pig valve and a cow valve right now wow well i'm so, moving anoint to you that's right but when i used to do some uh practicing uh on on valves and things like that we used to use a cow uh pig valve and the reason what was, do you mean practicing well yeah developing a, a new valve oh, were you working in the medical field oh yeah oh yeah i didn't know that okay yeah no yeah. i did that forever yeah uh don't they and, use the bypasses also, pig valves? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, the pigs were so close to the human valve that they were just great models. They were terrific. Yeah. And we could get them all the time. Yeah, they say pigs are very close to human. Oh, the, the heart is unbelievable. It's a little smaller than most sizes, but... Uh, could you, do people, they, they don't replace people's hearts with pig hearts do they no not pig hearts but, but they were valves. The, the, the valves but there was a guy in uh south africa who did that is that christian barnard yes yeah, he did try a pig va a pig pig heart yeah once. yeah the, the guy died if i remember correctly yes. yes i mean barnard did the first transplant i believe anywhere yeah and uh i don't know how long that person lived i think that person lived a while quite a while the but then he that started using pig hearts, and that wasn't working. My first surgeon, uh, my heart surgeon, uh, actually uh, came from South Africa and was trained by him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, he was at Yale, and then he ended up uh, at uh, L.A. So, uh, the Bakey was uh, also uh, was Barnard's assistant. Well, he's out. He was out of Texas, out of yeah. Houston. Mm -hmm. The, the um, uh, yeah, what was the hospital? I had a friend who was uh, in there. Yeah, it was in Texas. Yeah, though. yeah. Uh, Texas Tech, I think, is the name of the the no, university. No, but Bakey was, was at. Uh, was, uh, yeah, that's a different name. Yeah, I can't remember. yeah. But but uh, yeah, that was out of Texas. He was the second one. He was the first mm -hmm. one in the United States to do a, a transplant, yeah. and that's where people, all people, headed in those days to get a transplant. You know. Yeah, the uh, my father had a uh, bypass done at New York Hospital, and the guy uh, who did his bypass uh, worked with the baking, uh, but he was doing it at uh, New York Hospital. Uh, my father's uh, bypass was one of the first 100 uh, uh, bypasses ever done. It was still experimental in '72, and he survived it okay. Ten days. He, he got blood clots after uh, the operation and died. Uh, yeah, that was that was the trouble back then. Today, uh, 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 bypasses are not, you know. No, they're, they're routine. What, uh, Jeff, uh, what have you had? Have you had any, uh, you, you've had some heart work done, right? Oh, yeah. I had, uh, my first valve was a mechanical valve. Yeah. Which theoretically could last for forever. Yeah. Um, however, I had to take Coumadin with that. And because of Coumadin, I would get a, blo a blood clot which caused me to have a stroke oh okay Bad. If, you, if you get cut that's dangerous isn't it oh yeah well yeah, it's not so much the cut is not so dangerous you're gonna bleed and you're gonna bleed a lot but you, you can somehow manage that 
Well, you just put yeah. pressure. But the problem is when you when you get a, a bleeder in your brain. Yeah. Not so, a good so day. what? Did, so what? Well, you did, shave, what you must use electric shave. So what do they do? Do they re, they replace the mechanical uh, uh, one, right? Yeah. So I had that taken out, and I had a pig valve put in there. Yeah. And that was again uh, open heart surgery number two. Okay. Yeah. And they just put uh, a zipper in you now, right? Well, at the <laughs> same time, uh, the arch. Do you know what the aortic arch is? Kind of showing us the aortic valve, but I don't know the arch. Well, I think I know the, aortic, the aortic valve comes out of the heart, but then the basic thing of the blood that comes out of the heart goes around this big arch and goes right into the center of your, your belly, so to speak, and then splits to both legs. Yeah. And then they have all kinds of vessels that go to your arms and and your tongue, for all I know, and you know. All over. So anyway, that was, uh, but that was a pretty extensive surgery. I think that took ten hours. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, the guy who did that was called John Alefteriadis. Yeah. And yeah, a very good surgeon and uh, uh, also yeah. a, a guy who wrote a book. It's a amazing what we can do today. It really yeah. is. But the can last I get into Lance Balls. <laughs> he probably could. Don't worry about it, Rob. It'll they'll, if you wait long enough, it'll fall off by itself. <laughs> <laughs> but the last one that I had was was really interesting, and that is they do the whole thing through a catheter, and with a balloon and a little stent and a cow valve all attached. They make a small incision in your groin, right? In your groin, yeah, and. Put that in, pumped it up, expand it, let it go. It's kind of like it one of those. Kind of like one of those. Fo- it's kind of like one of those fold-out books. It was. <laughs> you know? That's exactly is what the, it is. is. Is that an angioplasty? The stent. I no, guess I know when he when he had well, the balloon. The stent was looked. part. A stent I, was well, part. Well, I of. guess it is, but yeah, you know, but it's just a part of the procedure, so to speak. Uh, they used to just take uh, people who were having heart attacks and things like that, and they had thick uh, heart uh, valves that they would put a balloon in to expand it out and stretch it out and yeah. and compress some of the clot and stuff like that. But yeah. this is uh, the technology part is is the same. Okay, it's it's a balloon. Yeah. And I came up uh, well, typically uh, in those first surgeries. Mm-hmm. When you uh, come in uh, operatively, post-operatively, you're in bad shape. I mean, like for a week, you could hardly walk. And for a month, you could walk up, but it hurts or you don't have the energy. And, you know, that goes on. But this last procedure that I had, I wake up and my wife says, how do you feel? I go, I'm ready to go home. And I, I did the next day. Yeah, which wow. was fantastic. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that terrific? Yeah. Uh, so you think about that, and you know, like what they did with Kimmel's kid. I mean, the baby's heart is the size of a what peanut? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. still operate on that. Yeah, that's How, a, by the they, way, that's a common uh, operation procedure. Yeah. Well, but because still, uh, you know, I don't what say it. There is a there's actually a movie that HBO did uh, a while back about. Uh, it was called, uh, about blue babies. And I can't remember the name of it, what heaven sent or something. And it was about the first doctor to do mm-hmm. that kind of operation by going into the heart of, of kids who were born blue and literally saving their lives. And this black doctor who worked with him, not a doctor, but his assistant, who was basically the guy who fabricated all the, all the stuff. And it, it was starring Mo's Def, and I'm trying to remember who the other guy was. And it was really, it was really good. Now, you know, it's just fascinating. It's amazing to me. It's just, I'm so, I think it's cool as hell. Yeah, but it's now, just, you know, we just get great stuff to work on. It's, it's well, or he wasn't a heart surgeon, right, uh, Carson? Well, well, uh, he, he just separated. No, he was, a, he was a brain surgeon. He was a heart surgeon. No, brain surgeon. Brain no, surgeon. Brain. brain surgeon. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Ben Carson. Yeah. 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 But um, a, lot of, a lot of kids... Yeah, funny the the way people are born. Uh, there's a huge transition 
that goes on between when you're in the womb and when you're you're born. Yeah, like okay. like the outside sucks. <laughs> I mean, here's somebody yeah. who doesn't have to breathe. I don't yeah. want to go. Right? I, you know, working on 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 flood on blood yeah. from their mother attached to you, and all of a sudden you're out, and you better start breathing, and and you've got to make your heart work. You yeah. know, before your mother was helping to make your heart work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well. In that transition, there's this open little hole mm -hmm. between the left atrium and the right atrium of everybody's heart okay. as they're being born. And natural nature, 99% of the time or whatever, 98%, almost 98%, 99%, that little valve closes. Yeah. But once in a while, it doesn't close. And then that, of course, operates uh, a surgeon to, to yeah, do that yeah. kind of work. And a guy who's used to working but, with, but before, with children. But before this operation was invented by this guy. There was no way to many, do Many, many, many years ago. Yeah. I mean, like 100 years ago. It was uh, babies died all the time. It's blue babies. They just yeah. were born blue and they died. And, and, uh, and what Kimmel was saying was that, you know, he just uh, didn't feel that any child should be left by the side of the road because he can't get the proper care. Uh, the Thank fact you. that you can walk into an emergency room and get help with something like this, yes, Newt is right that far, but the point that Kimmel made was beyond that point, there's more that needs to be done. His kid's going to need another operation in about three months to do another level of this thing. And there has He's to be- He's going to grow. There has to be aftercare. There has yeah, to be it's a con now a pre-existing condition, and it's a pre-existing yeah. condition, okay. and and no emergency room will deal with that. You know, they don't say come back in three months. So uh, uh, the point he was trying to make was, hey, you know, these are kids. They shouldn't. The, the first thing they do is they breathe, and the first minute that they breathe, if they need help, they should be able to get it. And there shouldn't be any question that you can. He said, I was lucky. I got the best doctor in town for this. He said, but not everybody's going to get the best doctor. You know, so it's a very passionate story on his part. And, uh, and, and what I felt when I watched him the first night talking about it was I, I was watching real life for change on television. I wasn't watching something that was, was uh, prefabricated, you know. Yeah. And and so I you know and I'd like to think we do the same thing here because Rob talking about the cyst on his balls uh, certainly you and know qualifies as real life. It's as, as challenging. <laughs> when it's, hey, listen, when you've got a cyst on your balls, you don't give a shit about that blue baby. You want to get that cyst <laughs> off of your balls, I'm right? Sure if Rob's going to go home the next day. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't even care about Donald Trump at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I I sit I sit Rob. Yeah. No, no, no! Hot compresses. Oh, hot com oh, oh yeah. you're trying to get it ripe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was told hot compresses. Oh, oh. if you if you put ice on it, good good advice, Doctor Phil. He gives him the Trump I'm, test. I'm, I'm ice is a the lot faster. Yeah. Ice, ice, cool. ice will make him feel more comfortable. It uh, might, but it's, it's non -health Oh, by the way, Kimmel did mention. That his kid now will have a pre-existing condition. Yeah. I yeah. think Kim will be able to afford to set up a, a, a deal where the kid will always. You know what he did? He told people to send money to the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles yeah. or in Hollywood. I think it was Los Angeles or Hollywood. But it doesn't matter, that area. And, and they, they got so many donations. It was amazing off yeah, of this. But uh, and uh, uh, they they do that work, and they they do it uh, gratis for a lot of kids who come into the place. But you know, I I've often said I don't I don't believe in the use of uh, of of um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, for benefits and and raising money for things for that the government should be doing for us that they should be taking care of. Uh, that, uh, yeah, it's nice that we have these hospitals that say, hey, we'll take any kid that comes in. But the fact of the matter is they shouldn't have to. That should be a given. Uh, in in yeah. many countries, that would be that. Yeah. I mean, 
But you talk to people from any other country and you tell them that, you know, people are being turned away uh, from hospitals mm -hmm. or they're being patient dumped. That was another one that was happening. You know, they find a patient that's got a real problem, so they put them on a bus and take them to another hospital and dump them off on the front steps. That, that's been going on for years. Yeah. Police officers they a 30 uh, minute put them on BART. Uh, they get a they get a hold of a like a hobo or something or a homeless guy or hobo has that term been used since the forties? <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, you know, and what'll happen is they'll they'll buy them on the train, yeah, them on Bart and send them to Berkeley. Well, they they're used <laughs> to riding trains, those hobos. You know yeah. that, don't yeah, you? Exactly. <laughs> but, they just send you to the next hospital yeah. on the train. Um, yeah, well, well, no, to the next city. Well, I suppose we should uh, talk to the elephant in the room. Uh, which is the Bill? surprising news tonight that Comey has been fired, the uh, the head of the FBI. And I thought, I thought he had that job for eight years. I think that was yeah. supposed to be it's his term. Position, ten, but, but, ten years, four years into a 10-year job. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah he can be fired by the president. He can only be Anybody fired by the president. Well, he yeah. was barking up the wrong tree with this president because he was going to look into the Russian connection, and he had to, and the president had to stop that, but fast. Well, yeah. The next guy will look into the Russian connection, but you know, uh, Comey. Uh, I guess uh, they recommended that they fire him, and he did. And with all the grief that he got uh, by waiting 18 days to fire uh, uh, Flynn. Uh, he acted decisively uh, and and did what he well, had to do. Decisively, oh, this is going to cause him more problems than he only ever from, imagined. Only from the Democrats. No, no. The Republicans are yelling now, too. Yeah, they are. They're saying yep. this is starting to smell like a cover-up. That yeah. And these are leading Republicans saying this. Yeah. Top uh, lawmakers. Alderman and Ehrlichman. Uh, Holderman. Don't make jokes. There are. I can't uh, believe, Phil, that you're not bothered by this at all. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I'm bothered by the fact that. Uh, and believe me, we don't. We don't guy, love. We don't love. Maybe this guy, uh, Comey, was in bed with the Russians, and that's why he did what he did. And uh, I think it'll come out. I don't think there's going to be a cover up. Oh, come on. oh, there's not. There's not going to be. There is. There has been a cover up. And there will continue to be a cover-up because they're going to put somebody in that's ahead of the FBI that isn't going to uh, uh, assiduously go after these uh, uh, now, these does, people. Doesn't the appointee need to be approved by Congress? I believe so. I so, don't think so. You don't uh, think so, Kevin? I don't think so. I think they can hire him. Uh, I thought there was an approval process. Well, the, the there point, might be. I'm the point sure that I'm that. making is, is that the fact that you fire. What is that? Who's got a train? Sorry, that's uh, my that's not me. text that. that well, your text. Oh, it's, it's a nice. It's a great sound for a text. Yeah. However. Uh, it is. It's. It's. Uh, you know. There's a lot. Of, it. It doesn't pass the smell test. Nope. You know, and, and you're talking to a bunch of guys here, Phil, who don't like Comey. I mean, for what he did to Hillary and so on. You know, we, we don't like this guy, but we also don't like the fact that he was looking into the Russian connection and somehow he gets fired because he's looking into the Russian connection. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think that. No, the, you know what, uh, you know what Trump said? What did Trump say about why he fired him? I don't know. I, I, I didn't hear well, that. Well, then, then get a little knowledgeable well, before you go into an uh, argument hey, like this. Hey, I, I came home. Trump I said, Trump news. said, Trump said yeah. that he was getting rid of him because of the way he handled the Hillary situation. Yes. Like, yes. he but, gives a shit. Exactly. Get along, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see if there was some wrongdoing, if, uh, you know, if his smart, if his smart. He's a scapegoat, don't you see that? Bill, this, you're going to eat a lot of crow at some point. Hey, look, if his farts, if Comey's farts smell or a Trump's farts smell, it's going to come out. Yeah. By the and, way, we've been uh, joined by Tim. Can I say something? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what does it, what does it make any sense? Uh, even, like, say for Phil's sake. Yeah. And don't you see what he's, how he's looking to everybody from the outside? It doesn't look right. And then he uses... The Hillary reason, because he knows his whole coalition of people who voted for him hate Hillary. He's just using it as a backdrop to feed the frenzy. Maybe I'm surprised you can't see the questions in this. 
Maybe, but maybe he just did the right thing because it was the thing to do. Now he's going off he to. He pranks call me for how he handled uh, Hillary the first time, bringing it up before the election. Yeah. Now it's bad. I hey, guess. Alex? Yes, yes, Tim. Um, actually, I heard he, he asked some of his staff if he could fire Yates again. Oh, she was really thinking about uh, But he couldn't, so he went for uh, Comey. But <laughs> Sessions should have nothing to do with this because Sessions. Oh. Recused himself, and yes. Comey part of that investigation. That's a conflict of interest right there. Yeah, that it's the way it was done, and the reasons they gave. It, you know, they took uh, eighteen days to fire Flynn. It took ten months to fire Comey. That's just bullshit. Yeah, there's nothing to do with that. You know what Putin uh, does? I, he kills his opponents. He doesn't Trump just fire them. Trump's only yeah. been the president for three months. I don't trust him. I can't believe he. Uh, no, uh, no, but he should have fired on day one. Because he knew all the, he knew the history, he knew yeah, exactly what, what went on. It's also reminiscent of the mafia, Alex, because you could be a good worker for the mafia, but once you outlive your usefulness, they take care of, they get rid of you. Yeah, yeah. You're gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that this is going to cause a lot of problems for him, for Trump. Hey, if it wasn't for Loretta Lynch, uh, Hillary would have been president. Uh, Loretta Lynch and and Bill uh, Bill Clinton. That meeting, I think, is what uh, sunk uh, Hillary. Oh, because you're out of your mind, Phil. What sunk Hillary was the Russian connection, and what sunk Hillary was what Comey did. That you know, that thing that thing yeah. at the airport between uh, Lynch and 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 uh, Clinton. Mm -hmm. Uh, was something that uh, made a lot of news for about a week and a half, and then it became a minor consideration. It was never, if I'm not mistaken, was never brought up again. Lynch, Lynch said she was not going to prosecute uh, if the FBI said not uh, that she was just going to completely let the FBI handle it. I think Comey, Lynch, and Clinton were all in the same bed. That's his theory, but. Well, no, thank you, thank you. But it's amazing that you can come up with a half-brained uh, a, a, a conspiracy theory like that, but you won't find anything wrong yeah. with Trump. Because he I, I think I, you know, I think oh, Comey, Comey so gained, gained credibility when he tried to get permission to talk about the Trump Russia investigation before the election, and he went to the NSC, and also McConnell told him no. So all that time, nobody knew why he only brought up Hillary. It's because. He went through channels on Trump investigation, and he didn't get anywhere. They wouldn't Why? let him release it. Why didn't he go through channels on Hillary? Uh, because that was much more political, and, and it's it's a much much minor the case. And he made a mistake. I, you know, he did make a mistake. Didn't he but say? Trump did, be the one didn't he say at a hearing a few days ago that it, it it gave him great anguish when he did it? He it, he almost threw up. I think he said. Yeah, he had yeah, a moment his stomach 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 upset or something. Did you hear the, pre the oh, deputy see. press secretary tonight, Alex? No, I don't. I don't. You don't. You, you know, you're talking to a guy who doesn't listen to the news. Okay, well, just just so you know, Huckabee is her name, middle name, so yeah. she must be related to the Huckabee on I, I Fox News. I think she might be the but, daughter, uh, Sarah all, Huckabee. Yeah, Sanders. all she talked about was we've just talked too many, too long about this Russian investigation. <sighs> Let's put it behind us. Just like Bernie Hinton like said about the emails, we've heard enough about the emails. This is all the quelch. Number is two things. One, to quote the investigation, and number two, Trump has to be at the top of the news every week. He's got to be at the top of the ratings every week, so exactly. he does these grandiose things. The guy is suffering from grandiose syndrome. Sarah Sanders is a spokesperson for the White House. That's correct. And she, all she talked about tonight was uh, stopping the investigation into the Russia Trump connection. Now they've asked for a criminal investigation into the finances of Trump and the Jer and Jared Kushner's family. That request, Good. I think, went from the Senate yeah, over to, or hey, to the look, Treasury if, Department. If I, I would rather them investigate it and come to a conclusion one way or another. And if the guy is a bum, then he's a bum. And if he's not a bum, then it's yeah, time but, to But you're off. never going to admit that he, there's a possibility the guy is a bum. Hey, look, if they bum. drag him off, put him in cuffs, I'm gonna, uh, I'll admit. But they try to... I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know what's happening? I, I think a bigger question... If I can, yeah, add, just something that came up to my mind. People like Phil, because I have quite a few friends who are of that of his pers ideological persuasion, and we don't even. You've heard over the course of the last few weeks, Phil and I. There are a few things we do agree on. One of which is term limits, and uh, um, what would it take for someone like Phil 
to change their ideology and think, well, gee, republicanism is wrong. Um, I, I'm not concerned about Trump. Yeah, if, if I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't. Well, may, but you know, uh, the ideology, the underlying ideology of limited government uh, is a. I shame. have to say that I identify or vote as a Republican, but I am probably a lot more libertarian than I am a Republican. Uh, but I'm a libertarian that doesn't smoke dope. No, uh, just as <laughs> just as bad. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm I'm a lot further to the right on a lot of things. Uh, but um, uh, hey, hey, Phil, I have I a new mentor really, for you. I don't really Phil. feel uh, any affinity to the Democrat uh, to the uh, Republican Party. Yeah, uh, Tim. Ah, that's shocking. Got, uh, there's a mentor for Phil now. Yeah. George Will signed signed to work signed up to work for MSNBC. Turncoat. George Will. See, turn uh, uh, why do you call him a turncoat, Phil? Well, because he's a conservative. And, no, he's not. Uh, but he can still have his conservative views. And, and, and there, and, you didn't say that about Alan Combs, did you? Did you no, say I that like about Alan Combs? I no. like Alan Combs. Now, uh, yeah. but the thing was... Well, he uh, likes him because he's dead. You no, know, oh, I like him because he's dead, but... You know, the thing is, uh, with it, George yeah. Will, he, he wrote some uh, very anti-Trump things, so and I, I didn't think it was correct or fair. It and, wasn't anti-Trump, it was pro-American, uh, not anti-Trump. Why do you have this affinity to Trump? He's not like George, that. People. George Will is putting his country first. Uh, I, I slept with Trump. Oh, <laughs> out, the bed, like they said. Getting aside, I wouldn't be surprised if that turned <laughs> out to be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. you know, uh, and, he, and he was good. <laughs> that he was, for you. He, I don't know why he always agrees with everything he does. Well, did, did, uh, aren't, aren't you uh, going to pass the rumor around that I said that everybody who I was talking with Will Durst? Yeah, yeah I heard that. That everybody who is listening <laughs> to the program, which is not that significant, but it, all it would take is just a few of them. Uh, yeah, I was going to. I was going to. Uh, you just say, start the rumor that the chance that, earlier that Alex, I <laughs> heard that you slept with a nine-year-old boy, and uh, you know. Yeah, well, uh, but I did, and and that's know. the point. When did you stop sleeping with the nine-year-old boy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we wanted to start with the rumor that you know uh, Trump raped a thirteen-year-old uh, girl back in the back in the eighties. I think is when we were going to do it. And, and, and the fact it. is, it's not true. But if we all put it up on our Facebook page within twenty-four hours, it will become f no. fake news. Fake news, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it is true. <laughs> Yeah, you've been reading. Well, there that. is a, there is a, a story that he was being sued yeah. by a, by a woman who had been uh, been forced to have sex with him uh, when yeah. she was thirteen. Yes, yeah. that does exist. She was There's probably thirteen at one time, and uh, you know, but maybe she slept with him when she was. There are other women though. Who came what would it take? Well, you know, it's kind of like you go to a, a car dealership and they say, "What would it take for me to get you into this crappy car? Uh, what would it take for me for us for Trump?" To disappoint you so much that you throw him to the wolves on this program, um, he would have to sell out Israel. Uh, he would have to, uh, and I, I am not. Why against. is Israel such a big deal with you? Because I'm a Jew. And well, I'm, that's and a stupid and I don't reason. Stand up as a that's Jew a stupid reason. Israel, no, will. that is a stupid reason to to go along with the policies of a country that's political. Well, and I that believe, makes its I own political that. mistakes and has in, in, engaged in certain acts which are questionable. I mean, are you, are you one of these Chaim Yonkels who just because you're Jewish, you're going to be for Israel? Now, yes. Like, Jeff is as Jewish as they come. Stein is a name that could get you gassed in the old days. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, Jeff... Do you sit there? I've also and, been to Israel twice. Yeah, but do you sit but there and and I don't agree with anything. I've said. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm po Irish, and do I? Does that mean I? Uh, I'm Irish and Protestant. Does I? Does that mean I? Well, my family is, but does that mean that uh, I have to agree? <laughs> Or no. I have to disagree with what the Irish Catholics no. have done. And the, no, the, the, the Irish and the Catholic, the Protestants and the Catholics were killing each other for a thousand years, but nobody was trying to drive them into the sea. Uh, all they had was. Oh, they were just killing them for a thousand years. Yeah. Well, you know, they Maybe were if they'd, if they'd driven them into the sea and they could swim, they might be able to get to England. 
Yeah, yeah they floated with potatoes. But the the uh, Israel is a different story, and that is the Jewish homeland. And it's I am not going the Jewish to home. support. Tom, I, and I, I, I'm Jewish. I support it's, it's and fight for Israel and for Israel's right to exist. I am not for the diaspora. You, and you are uh, such I, a Chaim Yankel. You I'm know, a Zionist, and I believe in well, Zionism. Zionists, Zionists are evil, in my opinion. They always well, have been. I, I I'm an atheist. I believe that people are people. I'm a Jewish socialist Bundist. Yeah, well, I, and, and because of that, And I proudly think, so. Well, probably the last we, one so you'll we, ever it, hear of. Yeah, because what you want to do is you want to uh, uh, dis uh, disseminate all over the world. That's right. Until... until until well, you see, no it so, it happen, so happens that when we were all in one place at one time, they killed six million of us. Yeah, but now, now we'll fight back. Before they, we let them take our guns, we let them oh, take, uh, oh. we let them herd us into into ghettos, and you, now you know we'll nothing. Back. You know nothing of what went on in those ghettos, and I heard stories about them. When, uh, from from I, Jewish, Jewish socialist Bundes, and believe me, they had guns, they were fighters, they were braver people than you will ever well, be. I happen to have a recording from my friend's father who was twice interviewed uh, uh, for the, um, uh, by, uh, what's his, um, Stern, not Sternberg, what, what's, his, what's the uh, director's name? Uh, uh, Spielberg. 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 Yeah. And, and uh, he, he's a Holocaust survivor, uh, he, he went to the camp as a boy, and uh, he was within a day of dying uh, when they... Yeah, well, uh, that, that's all well and good. I was sat in a room, I sat in a room with, with 12 people at Passover. Let me finish this, Jeff. Okay. At, at Passover, uh, all of whom who had become Jewish fighters. They stayed in France and were fighting the Nazis, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the bravest people I've ever met, and they sat around telling stories about what went on. And, uh, you know, uh, quite different from the people who were in the concentration camps. These were the people they couldn't drag into a concentration camp. Well, they rounded people up. They rounded up the whole towns uh, we in We know Poland, this. We instance. know this. This is all history. What are you, what, what, what are you trying well, to prove? This I'm is telling history you, that I won't allow to repeat Well, well you know something? There's a history behind the Jewish Socialist Bund, and you won't find one iota of it anywhere in Israel. They will not allow the story of the Jewish Socialist Bund to be told in Israel. They will not Look. allow Yiddish to be spoken in Israel. Uh, I don't know about now, that's that. That's true. It, can, it cannot be used. Yiddish. It cannot Her be used as a, as a language in Israel, and the reason was because it was the language of the Jewish Socialist Bund, and the Zionists and the Jewish Socialist Bund were at odds with each other politically all the time. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if that weren't the case, the if that weren't the case, it. my father-in-law would have been the first prime minister of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there would have been no Instead, Israel. Instead, he was chased out of the country uh, because he, uh, yeah, yeah, but he, they, he, he was the head of the Jewish Socialist Bund. Right. If Susan's father was, uh, was uh, the prime minister of Israel, there wouldn't have been an Israel because he didn't believe in it. He, 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 didn't be, he, be, he believed that it, in the... the main tenant of the Jewish Socialist Bund was that you don't need a nation, okay? You take your culture wherever you go, that the most important thing you have and the most important thing and legacy you can give to your children is the, the music and the literature and the art of, 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 uh, of being Jewish. That's and you the take way that, it was. And you take that wherever you go, yes. and you live it wherever you go. No, that's the way it was. You know why Jews don't have a family crest? Because they weren't allowed to own land in Europe. They weren't, they, uh, and it was only within well, the last Well, yeah, that's really years. a disappointment to me because I always wanted a family crest. Well, no, but what if you wanted to own land? You couldn't in Europe. And that's, and they were forced to, to go from country to country. They were forced to be, uh, be uh, uh, jewelers and yeah, diamond yeah, brokers yeah, and, yeah. and scholars because they had to be able to take their ability to earn a living because they were being forced from this country yes, to that and, country. And, and, you know, uh, this can be said about uh, any other group that was put upon. Blacks in America had their own survival mechanisms, you know? Polish. Uh, yeah, Polish had their own Ask survival. The Polish Irish here, so. Yeah. 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 When's survival. the last time a Polish Irish was not allowed to own land in America? Or a Jew, or a black? You know, when, was the last, was, when was the last time that a Jew was prevented from coming to the United States because he was trying to get away from Germany? Hundreds of thousands, that, millions yeah, your, your Democrats were turned away. Were the ones that did that. Uh, Mr. Mr. FDR. 
uh, you know, the, the guy anyway, that anyway, uh, you, you no, hold no, up no, such no, high there's, esteem. There's, there's, anyway, you had your hand up, Jeff. Uh, Japanese people were often taken away from their property that they already owned. And, and who was that? Way. FDR. So, so, so he was a Democrat. Right. You want me to tell you how many, uh, how many Southerners or the Dixiecrats, which later on became Republicans, were racist and so on? I mean, those but were past Democrats. administrations. Had nothing to do with, with, with. Uh, it had to do with the passion of the day and what they felt was the best way to solve a problem. And quite frankly, uh, keeping Jews out of this country and not allowing them to immigrate into this country during World War II was it killed. Many, many, hundreds of thousands of Jews, at least, at the very least, and uh, and it can't happen again if if you never give up and you. It's never happening let again, but free. to other people. How about the immigrants, Syrians trying to get into this country? How about Islamics trying to get in this country to come away, get away from oppression? We're thro we're tr turning well, them around and sending them back honestly, to where they get killed. Honestly, I don't believe in in, in a Muslim ban. Uh, I do believe in vetting, and I do believe that they don't need three months to figure out how to do it. And uh, instead of instead of putting a yeah. stop on anyway, it, and having a Muslim anyway. ban, just fix the problem. This is not the Phil show. Anybody else have a comment? I guess it is the Phil show. What? Yeah, Jeff, I, Jeff. I, I guess I should say a little bit of that. Um, uh, if you think about anti-Semitism, it exists across the world, okay? In France, right now, it, it was very well uh, described recently. Uh, there's, uh, some of it happens right here in San Francisco, or wherever, yes. okay? It could be anywhere. But the reality is, America's pretty good shape for Jews. And, and these days, okay? It's a lot of personal problems, but you know what? We do pretty well. You're, you're doing all right, Phil. But the question is, you w wouldn't give the similar benefits to people who are not Jewish. That's not true. If they're if they're Muslims, would you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but you, you don't believe that that Trump thing about no Muslims should be allowed to uh, to come into the country? No, I don't believe that. I don't like it, and I don't support it. Well then, then, then why are you so forgiving of this fucking asshole? Well, just because I don't support that doesn't mean. My God, did I, I call the president of the United States a fucking asshole? Let's get well, back to Rob Sist. That that's probably. It's, well, it's near the asshole. It's better looking than uh, than uh, Trump, right, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think I finally, I may, I found something that Phil would say. That is, he does not agree what Trump says. Okay. There's a lot At least of one issue with Trump. I but you never, you never, you uh, never, you never talk it's about. Sure, Jeff. I talk about what you're asking. You, you to talk make about. no, you make excuses for every piece of bad behavier that he does. How it do would be easier to listen just do? to if you if you were more, you know, if you did were more forthcoming about those things because otherwise you sound like a blind follower. Well, yeah. you know, there are certain Which he things sounds like, by I do the way. like. He's not open I, I, I like the uh, the uh, limits that he's putting on the EPA. I thought they were out of hand. I like yeah, because the, we all know in protecting, protecting the environment's a piece of shit. You know, we well, don't want to protect I, hey, the environment. I'm an environment. environmentalist too, but I don't believe that climate change is based on well, uh, man's. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, believe me, believe me. Uh, you know, and uh, it's cyclical. Uh, I'll believe a scientist before and, I believe. And what you. about your buddy Gore uh, trying to come up with fifteen trillion dollars in carbon credits? Now this guy wants nothing but but to rule the world and and to come up with this bullshit tax on carbon credits. There's carbon in everything. What does that have to do with Trump? No. And and what is that? Who cares about the Al Gore? Al Gore is simply a guy who sits. I, around and he's an ad wait a minute hold on shut up phil she he's an advocate he's an advocate and that's it you know he doesn't have any power he can just he, advocate. he almost did well if it's no no, court no forget about that he almost did i'm saying he doesn't have any power hey it was a supreme court that uh that that made sure that he didn't get elected you know if he was elected we'd be in pretty sad shape right now no you, you, you don't know that you don't know what kind atheist. look we're in sad shape right now okay we're in sad shape right now. I don't think so. 
Yeah. You know, I, 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 there, I don't agree with everything that Trump is doing, but I don't disagree with a lot of things that he wants. He ran on a platform that I believed in, and, and many of the things that he's doing are the things that I wanted done. Can I say yeah. how, many, how many troops should we send to, a, to a Afghanistan? That, like that's a difficult that. thing. We were already in that war. Uh, that war wasn't started by Trump, and you can't just cut and run uh, like Obama did in Iraq, because it'll leave a a a, a, a void. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. What okay, to all, do. all right, Phil. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think there's anything we can win in the U.S. Do you want to land? Uh, 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 yes, Tony. Yeah, you want to live? Phil was worried about Gore being president. Phil, your own boy Trump bash Bush, who was a fucking terrible president. You forgot that? Got kind of attacked on nine eleven. And you're going to tell me we could have been any worse with Gore than your guy Bush? What are you, a well, revisionist? Uh, no, although... He was I, fucking terrible. Well, well you, know, you know, it's very easy for a guy it. like Phil to sit around and say, this is what would have happened if Gore had become president. But the fact is, well. Gore never became president, so you don't know what would have happened. There's, well, I do know that he's been working on these carbon credits. Already. All I'm saying is he is simply an advocate. He is simply a guy running around telling people this is what we need. He has no power to make them law. But he was he has just no power. He Trump. has no power like that asshole Trump has to write a, uh, a, a presidential edict uh, uh, saying that saying that we're gonna we're gonna do away with the EPA or we're gonna do away with tax credits for every for, time he writes a presidential edict except for a few of them uh, they've been overturned so uh, but if you get a guy like Gore and he influences uh, everyone to go with these carbon credits all it's gonna do is make him rich get get off of this whole Gore thing he's a has been when it comes to politics and when it becomes when it comes to being a public voice now you know. Uh, it, 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 you know, you you tend to live in the past, Phil, on everything, and 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 bringing up George Bush is not living in the past. Well, you were saying you're worried about Gore being president. I just said, don't you remember? It wasn't Gore who won; it was Bush, and it was a terrible eight years. You had nine eleven under Bush. You had a losing war, and you had a terrible economy. No, so you what have you got to say about that? And there are a lot of people who honestly believe, and I happen to be one of them, that Bush allowed 9-11 to happen because uh, he bullshit. because it was to his advantage to have uh, something like nine an event like 9-11. How do you uh, feel about that, Tim? Would you agree or disagree with me? Tim? I, well, I agree with I lost. I touched my mute button by mistake. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was told. a bridge in Brooklyn for you, Tim. No, he was told by, he was told by uh, Clinton to watch out for Osama bin Laden. That he was planning something, that he was up to no good, and he, they just didn't. They and didn't. when Clinton had the opportunity to take out Osama bin Laden, uh, he fr he froze. No, and they then, never. When did, he, when did he have a chance to take out Osama bin Laden? Uh, they they uh, were uh, they were going to give him to the U.S. on a platter. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, uh, then they made some futile effort at. at Does anybody at, remember this, Tim? Do you remember it was this? A baby milk factory. Yeah, I, I don't remember well enough. I, I, I thought it was less conspiracy well, theories, but it, I don't know. I'm going to take the Trump all and say if it's from the media, I guess it was fake news, Phil. It wasn't I don't believe the that. media. There was a bombing. Right. Clinton I don't believe said, the news. The Clinton sent bombers, and they bombed something, and the uh, uh, I, I don't remember which country it was, but they said that it was a baby milk factory. And uh, but uh, months before, uh, they offered uh, yeah, okay. to give Clinton right. uh, to give uh, Osama bin Laden okay. to Clinton, and he yeah. turned it uh, down. All right, all right. Now let's have a couple of fill free moments here, because <laughs> um, uh, I, I got a I got a note today from a guy uh, named Oscar Levant of all. Names. Oh, that moron! That moron! Yeah, he said he he doesn't want to uh, he doesn't listen to this show anymore because of Phil. Yeah. And that well, Phil, know, Phil has he, taken the, the waning years of my career and di <laughs> take, thrown him in a ditch. <laughs> that that moron he used to call himself something else, and uh, he's been he's been writing uh, he's been writing that kind of crap for a while. He's he's your typical elitist liberal that oh, wants to oh. silence anyone that doesn't agree with him. Well, <sighs> the only reason I oh, keep stop. you on the show, Phil, is because I need that balance. 
You no, know. I thought you kept me on the show but, because but, I've been paying you all these all these months. But, but sometimes it seems <laughs> it's like it's the mind. Phil Meyer show and not the Alex Bennett program. Uh, yeah, you know, they, yeah. if they're going to beat up on somebody, I'm the only one they can beat up on because Patrick's too nice. You know, and, well, no, uh, because they agree with the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you're playing to the choir when you play to guys like this Levant guy. Well, I, I'm not. I refuse. Have I gotten rid of you? Have I taken his advice? No. In not. fact, I wrote him back tonight and said, "Fuck you." No, you, you basically know, said you're not. Said, you're not listening to me anymore because Phil's on the show. What kind of a, what kind of a so-called loyal fan are you? You know. Well, you know, uh, it's uh, you've always been extremely fair, and uh, if anybody was the Alan Combs of uh, of radio, it, it's certainly you. You know, you should Anybody get the Alan, the Alan Combs, Combs, Combs of radio. Yeah, I think Alan that, Combs. Uh, you, oh well, I'm not that, you, you know, for the most, you're a gentleman. Combs was a gentleman. Uh, you listen to both sides of the story. You still fight like a, a talk show host. You cut, you cut me off, and you, you. I you, cut you off because you won't shut up. Well, I'm, yeah, okay. You know, I mean, the only it's way I can cut get... him off many times. I hey, just, hey, Alex, does, does that me. make Phil Joe ba Jim Bo Bohannon? What's uh, so, Jim? Oh, Bannon. Bohannon. Uh, oh, what Jim Bohannon. Jim Bohannon. He, he, had, he, had he a, took over for uh, Larry King on the radio that was syndicated years ago, yeah. twenty three uh, years ago. Uh, he no. was on every night on talk show. Yeah. Jim I, Bohannon. I, I didn't know him. So I know Rob, him. Rob, how are your balls doing? Oh, no, they're hanging it low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you icing? Uh, not icing. Are you? Are you? Uh, uh, low and tight. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, are you putting compresses on it? Yeah, you know, I'm done for the night with that. What yeah. about a hot tub? No good. You could do that if you want. Oh, hot I'm not tubs a big hot tub. I would do that. I actually, you should get like a nice uh, fragrant like bubble bath or something. Maybe just sure it's not an ingrown hair. No, it's oh, not. Oh, stop. He would know the difference. Well, the problem, the, <laughs> now you, you, you went to the surgeon, right? I went to the walk-in clinic. Yeah, but what about the surgeon? The surgeon is Friday. Oh, oh. you go see the surgeon on Friday. Yeah, I see. OK, well, I, I just read up on it and it said that it's uh, it's um, a lubrication that's generated uh, in the hair duct follicle. And uh, and basically the oil has clogged the pore. And, uh, and it so it's it's what is it like a pimple? Then? And then it becomes yeah. infected. Yes. Yeah. What are they doing mm -hmm. to get that off? I guess they got a lance. I got to tell you, when I was... Lance it and squeeze it out. When oh, I, my okay, God. Okay, let me tell you, when I was a kid, you know, when you're a kid, you, you have a tendency to have many more eruptions than you do at any other time in your life. You know, you get pimples on your face and you get pimples. Sure. Well, I used to get these giant boils on my ass. Oh my and they would God. have to take me over to Marin General Hospital where they would have to lance the thing. Or it wasn't shingles? And I think they were wearing like, you know, these kind of kind of things they wear when they weld, you know, yeah. when they started yeah. to lance Space the thing. Mask. <laughs> and they, they, I, I had two or three of them lanced when I was a kid. We would run over to the hospital. He's got another one. You sure, know. it wasn't shingles. No, it was. It, these were big, giant, purple boils. Oh boils. Yeah. So, so, so I know what Rob's going through because I went through yeah. it a lot when I was a kid. I've never had them since. Yeah, then you'll have locusts and pestilence. Yes, <laughs> along with the boils. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, Jeff. My son, uh, when he was younger, uh, he had the same problem. Yeah. As kind of what you have, Rob. And yeah, he had to go to a surgeon, and uh, it took care of it pretty quickly after that. I bet they can take care of it in the office, though. I bet it's an office visit. Too bad they couldn't give you a I hope so. I, I, it should be. Uh, I think it should be. You never an know. Visit. I just Today. hope they. I, I would prefer to be knocked out, but if not, man, I just I don't say, know. Fuck the, uh, I, I'm get hoping. neutered at the same time. <laughs> well, it, the hot it, stuff it, 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 I'd OD on Benadryl and. Well, no, but it could be that it's it's the <laughs> sort of thing that they can take care of just locally. You know? myself out. Yeah, but then I have to think day. about it, and oh I don't want I don't want to know. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm feeling this pain. Well, let's not tell them. Well, here here's the thing. The worst thing is that you go into the hospital, and as you know, the hospital's the best place to get killed. Uh, because sure. of, of uh, any number of things. I mean, I, I went in for kidney stones, but I could have come out with a staph infection. Oh and uh, 
So I you did. don't want to die from this, Damn. Rob, because you don't want your wife to have to tell your relatives. <laughs> when they ask what he died of, <laughs> well, he had this sebaceous cyst on his testicles. <gasps> and they're going, what? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> you don't want on your tombstone died of balls, you know. Oh my God, he fried twisted it. nuts or something. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> Not fun. Yeah, but I'm, I'm keeping out, keep out a good thought for for Patrick. I mean, everything's going to be fine with Patrick, but you know, this is a he he. You know, he, this is the kind of service he's going to have to live with all his life mm -hmm. because of the condition he has, the situation he has. You know, uh, we think that, well, when somebody gets paralyzed, they just run around in one of those motor scooters and, you know, that's it. But there's a lot more involved there. I mean, you don't think about the fact that the plumbing doesn't work, that you've got to use a catheter and that if you get a stone, they have to go in and operate on it. You know, how far in does the catheter go and why can't it pass the broken up? Supposedly, stones it, it, supposedly it, it, it can't pass through the catheter. There's, a, there's a, a thing on the end of it that's almost like a filter or like that the stones won't fit in. Uh, I think he said. Yeah, I think something. I think that was his answer to that. Can they use a special catheter, maybe? Well, you know, if you put a big catheter in, boy, could you imagine the pain? Well, he wouldn't feel well, it. Well, he doesn't feel the pain. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 all I'm saying is that maintenance on yourself is different the minute you lose power to the bottom of your of your of your body. Oh, absolutely. And and yeah. and just because you're still alive above doesn't mean that you're going to have a lot of problems down in that general area and stuff that you have to monitor because you're never going to feel it. Yeah. You know, if you suddenly got a major pain in your leg from a thrombosis, from a blood clot or whatever, you're not going to feel it. Yeah. You know, so you have to be aware of these things. So, you know, that's the, but that's the life he lives. And he's very, he's, I don't want to say brave, you know, but... He's very, he owns it. He, he owns it. Yeah, that's Power. the best way to put it. And it owns him. Yeah. Well, and, as you guys say, if you're a Republican, you don't feel anything anyway. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah. we have no feelings. You know. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And you it's know. true. Uh, <laughs> I, it's not a lie. Uh, but no, Sociopathic. It, it, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, where do you think, uh, Rob, where do you think this whole thing with Trump right now with uh, Comey is going to wind up? I think it's going to wind up being a, a real problem for him. You know, quite frankly, I, I didn't even know about it until we were on the air tonight because I've been so busy. I was watching the Yankee game before and I was laying down before that and I had been staying away from the news. So when I, when we got on the air and I heard somebody say something, I went to CNN. I haven't even had a chance to read anything or so i don't know i, I just but, think yeah. it, it 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 reminds me of like the nixon days when he started firing people well, and yeah you know and i think it's going to explode i mean it, without that's my initial thought without having read anything or what do they what do they call that it. purge uh during nixon when he fired everybody at the justice department Saturday Night Massacre. Saturday or Night Massacre. Like yeah, Saturday Night Massacre. Did they have that under Trump? Uh, didn't he fire all the uh, AGs and assistant AGs? Well, they were getting. They were ready to be re-upped. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, and but, also the, uh, the the guys in the uh, I don't know if the State Department the uh, the uh, the uh, the guys that are ambassadors all the ambassadors yeah. uh, to other countries yeah. I think they they got let go too. Um. But it, you know, it it it, it stinks. It 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 doesn't pass the smell test, and no. you know damn well that there are people in our government, and a lot of them Republicans, who are very bothered about this. They're bothered about it primarily, I think, the Republicans, because Comey is a Republican, you know, and uh, they've they've stood up for Comey through a lot of these things that have been happening, and I think they're truly bothered by this because it it almost says because he was investigating the Russian connections, that he was fired to be silenced. Now, let, and Feinstein. Let, let, me, let me ask Phil one question here. Uh, uh, not that we want to make him the center of attention by doing it, but this is the question. Yeah. If you were going to fire somebody, how do you fire them? Phil, you've had to fire people, right? 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What, 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 do you, what do you do? How do you do that? Yeah, I do it face to face and I tell them uh-huh. uh, it's uh, it's not working out. Uh huh. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 time. I, I will ask Thank Tim. Tim, how did he how did Comey find out he'd been fired? Are you aware of this, Tim? Telephone. No, no I had to walk away for a second. I just came back. Are you, uh, a letter. Uh, no, I was saying. I was asking Phil, how do you fire people? He said, face to face. Tim, tell him how uh, how Comey was fired, how he found uh, out about he, it. He, he was giving, he was talking to federal FBI employees, I believe, in an L.A. field office. He yeah. saw it on the TV monitor there. <laughs> he found oh, out about damn. it on television. <laughs> well, I guess the media is good at, uh, at exposing so what's going on. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, uh, you know who so really so wanted uh, Comey fired? Who? You know who wanted him fired? No, who? Putin. Yeah. Uh, he's doing, he, he's, he, he wants if, everything done to create more discourse and more discord in the American democracy. The Democrats which, are meeting at 930 in, a, in the Senate chamber. How long, the do you think, Tim, how long do you think Comey would have been in his job if Hillary was elected? After I what think, I think Comey tried to be a good guy. I don't think you're not going to. You should. I, I, I don't know. I look. I, Hillary, I think. I think Hillary would have kept him, and I think she would have kept him. So. No, for a very important reason, because of the relationship between Comey and Hillary during the election. If he were to, she were to fire him, it would look really bad. Okay. Yeah, I, I think she would have let him go in a heartbeat. I, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You know who? You know who Trump has a meeting with tomorrow. The uh, Russian ambassador. He's oh. got to get him his weekly report. <laughs> it, it cha- they changed the schedule this evening to include uh, Lavrov, the uh, Rus- the Russian uh, um, diplomat. Well, I guess, uh, like Hitler said, you right. you uh, you keep your uh, your friends close and you keep your enemies closer. You know. How about uh, your, uh, and sometimes how about when how about your debtors. <laughs> How about people that can blackmail you? How close do you keep them? Yeah. Well, I got a feeling any of this stuff is going to come out, and he he's not going to be able to conceal something if uh, there's there's enough he's people. It, it, he head. can conceal he's it fine. if the person that he puts in the office is his toady, and he isn't going to assiduously prosecute it. Well, well the, the, Demo- oh, it, the, the, Demo- wait, the Rob, Democratic congressman sent a letter telling the, everybody in the FBI to preserve all the evidence of the investigation. Uh, Rob, 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 yeah. Rob was trying to say something here. Rob, well, it, 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 the question I asked before whether or not the, uh, <clears throat> the position has to be approved. It goes to the Senate. I looked it up here. Okay. They need uh, they need Senate confirmation. Right, Senate confirmation. All right. But there has to be confirmation. He can't just put in somebody, uh, and there'll be there'll be discussion. Now, uh, do they need do they need a simple majority or fifty one? Fifty one. Okay. 51. And how do, how long uh, and how much do you think uh, this whole thing you know is going to be going on? I mean, he, he, sure, he may put somebody in there, and they maybe will finally say, okay, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll do it. It spell uh, he you know passes the smell test, so to speak. You're, but, you're Feinstein, but she said that there doesn't seem to be any connection between Trump and the Russians. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, some of his operatives, yes, but between Trump and the Russians, she she had said that they're at this Isn't time. Isn't that typically how it works, Phil, like plausible deniability? Well, you know, I mean, all of these people came to him uh, pretty much after he was after he was elected. He didn't put uh, Flynn and all of these other guys on until after he had it's become It's not true president. about Flynn. He worked with Trump. Oh, he was an operative. That's right. But yeah. uh, he didn't okay, up- so you changed your mind. No, 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 no. I got you. It's not that I changed my mind. You gave me a, a morsel of information that made me uh, realize that the statement wasn't correct. Yeah, a morsel of information. Yeah, it was that, all the information. And was an operative, and uh, uh, prior to uh, being appointed. Yes, right. Well, anyway, yeah, that's a good place to start playing the theme song. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it just goes on and on. But, I mean, this this thing isn't over. This is going to be a big story for the next couple of weeks at least. And uh, I, I I just think that it's just, it stinks. It just stinks. 
Gabnet. It's good anyway, for Gabnet. Anyway, yes, it's good for Gabnet, but quite yeah. frankly, I'd rather it wasn't good for Gabnet, but good for the country. Phil, thank you for calling. Uh, Kevin, thank you as well. Brian Ludwig, always nice having you here. Tim, uh, one of the smartest guys in the room, uh, besides me. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. A lot of contributions tonight, by the way. Rob, uh, I'd like to say I'd like to kiss your balls and make them well, but I won't. Fishman took us. Around. And uh, Tony, thank you for calling. Thanks to all of you for calling, as a matter of fact. Wave bye-bye, everybody. Okay, there they go. And that's it. That's our uh, citizens panel for tonight. Let me just uh, close down the uh, Skype lines because the next people on here are going to want to use them. And I hope that, by the way, that uh, all these people will... Uh, and you will call the intersection, which is next over most of this same station, called Gabnet. And then uh, uh, at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's uh, Connections. Uh, and they're on at, uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, I'm Alex Bennett, your lovable host, saying, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.